Praise God. Good morning. Today, the Lord has laid upon my heart to say something in according to God's will, and that is what he laid upon my heart. So, our subject will be today, say something that is in God's will. I want you to understand what I'm saying. Our subject is say something that is in God's will. We're going to read a couple of scriptures and I'm going to hope that you get an understanding. So first we're going to say a quick prayer Father God, we invite you here today, invite you in our hearts again to take control, to lead us and guide us into your will and into your word. I pray that your word fall upon good ground, and the ground that fall upon will produce the fruit that is fit for the kingdom of God. And we give you praise, glory, and honor for it. We believe that it shall, we believe that it will produce the fruit that is fit for the kingdom. And we're asking you to have your will and your way in this place today. Thank you. Amen. Say something that is in God's will. Let's turn our Bibles to Mark 11, verse 23. And it reads as follows. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Basically, I want you to look at what was being said. So you have to say something that is in the will of God. Praise God. Let's turn our Bibles. To another passage of scripture. First John 5 verse 14 and 15. And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he heareth us, Whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Remember what I'm saying. I'm saying something that is according to his will. So when you say something that is God's will, most of the time, it is God that put it in you to say. The scripture says he will give you the desires of your heart. In other words, the desires in which he's speaking of is the desires that he places in your heart. When he put a desire in your heart, that desire becomes a part of you. And you are all of a sudden desiring this that God has put in your heart. Amen? See, what, what I want you to understand is that God gives us these desires. And if he gives us these desires, then these desires must be of God from the beginning. 
then why wouldn't he grant you what he wants you to have? Y'all understand what I'm saying? He wants you to have the desires that he placed in your heart. Then if he wants you to have that desire, he's going to make you desire it and he will grant it to you. You got to say something because of these desires. You will begin to pray about it. You will begin to ask God for it. You will begin to request it from God. And as according to his word, whatsoever you desire when you pray believing, you will have it. Because of God has already given to you the things that are needful. That desire is what's in your faith, in your heart, that has taken up the place of anything that is ungodly. I want you to understand that we are walking according to God's will. It's not my will. I, it's not I that live, it's Christ that lives in me. Christ that lives in me is his will to live in me. It is his will to be a part of me that I can do the things that he requires me to do. If I'm walking in obedience, if I'm telling people what God wants me to tell them, if I'm giving you the word in which God has inspired in my spirit and in my soul, then I'm giving you what he has desired in me to give. He placed it in my heart. He allowed me to take it and pass it and give it to you. Every word that proceeded out of the mouth comes from the heart. Especially when you are doing the will of God. I don't have any thoughts. I don't have any desires. I don't have any, I don't have a mind to do my own thing. Basically, that's what I'm saying. If I don't have a mind to do my own thing, then whose thing am I doing? I'm doing God's thing. I'm doing the will of him that sent me. Not my own will then all of my desires came from him, then I'm walking in obedience to him. Praise God. Sometimes we have to understand the things that God is placing us in the position in which he's placing us that we can move from point A to point B. Then we have to look at Jesus and see that his coming was already foretold and that his obedience was his own will. He came to do the will of him that sent him. In obedience, you have to understand, <coughs> excuse me, the obedience part, understanding what obedience is and how important it is, as in Christ's life, we see that Jesus was totally obedient, 100%. Then if that's the case, then we have to understand, obedience is a key to doing the will of the Father. It brings success into your life, and that is the will of God. In other words, you really can't be successful without Christ in your life. Oh, yeah, you can buy a nice car. You can live in a nice house. You might even have a job making $40,000, $50,000, $60,000, $100,000. Now, some people call that success. I don't call that success. I call success when you're doing the will of God. You don't work for man. You work for God. God supplies everything that you have a need of. God gives you everything that you have a need of in your heart. I desire to have a house, Father. Then God put that in your heart. Now you have this desire to get a house, and you are asking God for this house. Then what did God tell you what you need to do? So you got to pray. What am I saying? Say something that is in the will of God. Say something.
something that lines up with the will of God in your life. This is all God is asking you to do. He asking you to have a little faith. He asking you to have some confidence. The scripture says that we have confidence in him. If we have confidence in him, then anything that we act according to his will, it is granted. Because of that petition that we've made, that petition is granted. Why? Because it was part of God's will from the beginning. Then if I need that house or I want that house, I'll say what I want. I have that petition that I desire because God put it in my heart. Then for you, you might need a healing. You might need to be touched by God in a way. Then you got to say something, the same thing there. Say something. Tell God what you need. Father, I got cancer. I need a healing. Father, I'm sick. My back is hurting. Father, say something to the Father and believe that God will answer your request. <coughs> Excuse me. Praise God. The thing that we are trying to get to you, every Sunday I'm here preaching and, and, and speaking to you, trying to let you know that there is a thing that God want you to have and that God wants you to have the best in life praise God God wants you to be successful in life our success comes from God because he's the man that created us we didn't create nothing we didn't bring nothing in this world we don't take nothing out but here in this world God sent a man and he said that we should be like this man Jesus we should walk like him, talk like him, and become obedient just like he was to the Father. Then what I'm telling you guys is that you too can be just like Jesus. You too can do the things that he done in obedience in life. Doing what God tells you to do. All you have to do is say something and do the will of God. Say something in his will and he'll grant it to you if it's a request. Say something that you don't have. I don't have quite under the, the understanding that I need, Father. Then if you lack understanding, let it ask of God. That's what the scriptures say. Then we must also obey what the word of God tells us. We have to read the word of God and pray for understanding that the Holy Spirit will lead you into. And when the Holy Spirit leads you into understanding, my friend, you're on your way to doing the will of God. Out of all that you get, get an understanding. Because without understanding, my people perish. This is what the Lord said. This is what the Word said. So it's important that we say something. Say something that is in God's will and God will grant it to you. If it's a request, If it's for someone else, I'm praying on behalf of the mother of the boy. I'm praying on behalf of the deacon. I'm praying on behalf of my sister-in-law. I'm praying on behalf of my brother-in-law. But I'm making a request. I am saying something that's in accordance to God's will. Saying something that lines up to what God requested me to do. I'm saying something that came from my heart that God put this desire in me to pray for someone else, to help someone else. I'm doing this because it's God's will to be done, not mine. So we have to have a little bit more patience to do and to do the will of God God's way. We have to first listen to the voice of God. How do we hear the voice of God? First, you've got to be born again and filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what talks to you. That Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you. This is the temple of the Holy Ghost. If it's the temple of the Holy Ghost, then the Holy Ghost is lying in you, waiting to be done, waiting to be told what to do. All you have to do is give way. You give way to the Holy Spirit. You sit back and listen. To what the Holy Spirit say to you. 
Because the Holy Spirit is not going to take your order. It will take a request from God to tell you what to do. That request comes from God through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit reveals it to you what to do on God's behalf. Then you go forth to doing what God wants you to do, and all the things that you desire or you wanted to do will be taken care of. Because God don't take care of you as you take care of God's will. Praise God. When we're walking in God's will, we have to understand that there is nothing impossible to you. Because you are in line with God's will, can't nothing stop you, can't nothing hinder you, because it is God. Who, are, who is God? God is the Almighty God. He is the creator of everything that you see, everything that exists. This is the God that I'm speaking of that's telling you, little old you, telling me what to do. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the great I am. He is the, the omnipotent one. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. There is none without him. There is nothing without God. So I want you to understand that this big God, this almighty God, is speaking to me. And he speaks to you. He take time out of his busy schedule and talk to you and give you an order. Give you an opportunity. He's not forcing you. He's not going to make you. He's not going to put a stick out of his hand and hit you by the head with it. He's going to allow you to accept his will or not to accept his will. God is not one that is a slave master. God is not one that is going to force you to do anything against your will. Because, see, he wants you to choose him. He wants you to choose to do his will. This is the only way your will is going to ever be thought about. You have a will. Yes, you do. And it's up to you to choose whose will you're going to do. Your own or accept God. I chose to accept God, and mine has never been left because I gave up my will to do His will. Everything that I desire is already taken care of. I don't have a will. I don't have a mind. I just want to walk in Christ. I want to live in Him, and His will will be done in me, and my will is already granted. Anything that I desire, He puts something in my heart. He placed that want, that desire, that determination that he want me will in me. And I desired of him and it was granted to me. Because of me being obedient, me requesting, me accepting his will, me accepting him as Lord and Savior, I am his God. All I had to do was to say something that was in the will of God. And when I said something, this is what I said. I said, Lord, I accept your will in my life. I'm here to do what you desire me to do. Whatever you put upon me, I'm your servant. I give up. I submit. I surrender. No more me. The Spirit, the Bible tells us that we must decrease ourselves. Decrease that he will increase in us and live a greater life. Basically what I'm saying is I don't have a desire on my own. I accept the desire that he put in me. Whatever his will is for me is what I expect. I'm going to do. I have already accepted him. I've already started walking in his will. I've already been taught how to do this. He has already showed me told me. And I'm passing this knowledge on to you. I'm passing this knowledge on to you. And I'm hoping that you and you will understand the things that God has in store for you. He doesn't have a respected person. 
He don't have any one person that can do all things. You can't do it by yourself. This is why the church is the body of Christ. This is why there are so many members of this body. From the little fingers, the eyes, the head, he tells you, you are a member if you accept his will. Become a member of Christ. Become a part of him. Become obedient to him and walk in his will. And accept your position as a part of the body of Christ. Walk in your position and God will give you anything that you desire. If you just be obedient and he's saying to you, just say something. Understand, when you say something, God's will is done. When you accept God's will in your life, then God himself shows up and take over your life and expect you to understand what he's doing is leading you in the life that he wants you to live. You don't know what's good for you. So many of us have thought that drugs was good. So many of us thought that women was good. So many of us are thinking that going to college is going to be the best thing for me. Oh, starting a career is the best thing for me. But my Lord Jesus says, if you do my will, that's the requirement for this world's success. Just become obedient. Obedient unto the will of God. Make that sacrifice. And let God direct, lead, and guide your life. And today you will see and you will know that if God is in control, you cannot have it no sweeter than accepting him, than walking in him. And he'll give you everything that you can think of if we accept him as Lord, as Savior, and become a newborn creature. Turning over this world, accepting the world of righteousness. The scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of righteousness, the kingdom of heaven, his righteousness. If you seek him first, you are seeking his will. If you are seeking his will, then you've got to be obedient. If you're going to be obedient, you're going to have a key to success. And success is in the will of righteousness, in the will of God, because there is no other success. There is no other way to be successful. Without God, it's impossible to become a successful man of God, a successful person on the face of the earth. So you have to say something. Say something that is in the will of God. And when you say it, let it be coming from the heart. Let it come from within you. I'm going to tell you something. Even when you get ready to say it, our Lord Jesus has put it in your heart. It is a desire that came from God for you to be able to say something that's in his will. That desire is for him. He places it upon you to be born again, to receive him as Lord of your life, as Savior of your life. And when you accept him, you accept his will. Praise God. Praise God. I pray that each and every one of you today have heard something that will ignite and start a fire. Let God be your God be your leader. As always, say something that is according to God's will. Amen? Amen.